Hello once again. Thank you for joining me for Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church. I really appreciate you being with me today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our kind and dear Heavenly Father, as we go into your word today, we thank you that we have the word of God, the living word of God in Christ Jesus and the living word of God in your book, the Bible. Father, help us to hear as your Holy Spirit leads and guides us into your word, Lord, and help us to allow him to plant your word into our heart and change our attitudes and our motives and our behaviors. You are a glorious and wonderful Father who takes care of us, provides for us, watches over us, and Lord, just to know that you know the numbers of the hairs on every person's head in the world who has been and will be. It is just awesome to think how grand and glorious you are, which is far above anything that we could think. In Christ's name I pray, amen. I want to talk to you today about Psalm 72, and I'm going to read it to you, but I'll be throwing in some narrative. Hope for the Christian is the joyful expectation of the manifestation of God's promises. In Psalm 72, he gives us a reason to be very hopeful when we look to the future. Psalm 72 is a prayer, and it's also a psalm of or to Solomon. They are not sure whether Solomon wrote it or if it was written to Solomon. But often prayers and psalms, which are songs or hymns, are the same. This psalm is Solomon's prayer request, and it became a messianic psalm, speaking of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. And it is a prophecy about what is going to take place after the end of this age, the church age, and after the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, Israel's 70th week, when Israel is restored as God's blessed nation. So let's get into the psalm, and we're going to start with the first section, verses 1 through 4, that is the beginning of the prayer that Solomon prayed. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness, and your afflicted with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people, and the hills in righteousness. Now, mountains and hills don't bring peace and righteousness, but in the Bible, things often stand for other things, and especially in the Psalms, which are poets, poetic uh, license or, or their poetry. Mountains would be the nation, the human government of a nation, and the hills would be your local government. So he's praying that the human government would bring peace to the people and righteousness. He will vindicate the afflicted of the people, save the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. So let's go to the results of that answered prayer that became a prophecy. I want to ask you something. Do you sometimes start writing um, perhaps something that insight that you've gotten in the Word of God or maybe a prayer or something, or you're speaking to someone and words come out that really don't seem to be yours and you realize the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and through you? Well, this is sort of what happened to Solomon, I think. They will fear you while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. He will come down like rain upon the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. And Jesus came, and he died, and he rose again, and he ascended to heaven. But then he's coming back to reign in what we call the millennial reign. Verse 7 says, In his days... The righteous will flourish. Jesus is the king of righteousness. An abundance of peace till the moon is no more. Jesus is the king of peace. He will also rule from sea to sea. Now, Solomon's kingdom was never that large. And from the river, which would be the Euphrates, to the ends of the earth. 
The nomads of the desert bow before him. All will bow before him then. And his enemies lick the dust, bowing with their face to the ground. They will, they will worship him and recognize him as who he is, even though they will not accept him and remain his enemies. This harks back to Genesis 3.14, where God tells the serpent, On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat. The kings of Tarshish and of the islands will bring presents. This would be the far lands. So it, it's the entire earth. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer tribute. All kings will bow down before him. All nations will serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he cries for help. The afflicted also, and him who has no helper. Oh, what wonderful promises. He will have compassion on the poor and needy, and the souls of the needy he will save. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence. Jesus is our Redeemer, and their blood will be precious in his sight. So may he live, and may the gold of Sheba be given to him, and let them pray for him continually. Hmm. If Solomon's talking about himself, that's understandable. But we see that this also has a prophecy section to it, which would be Jesus. So how do you pray for Jesus? Well, are we not his body on this earth? Are believers not his body? And when we pray for one another, wouldn't we be praying for him and for his body? Let them bless him all day long. May there be abundance of grain in the earth on top of the mountains. There'll be prosperity in that time. Its fruit will wave like the cedars of Lebanon. At the time of Solomon, Lebanon was known for its great and beautiful cedar trees. And may those from the city flourish like vegetation of the earth. God did not intend for us to have huge cities. And we know that these big cities are full of corruption and pain and sorrow and violence. But in the millennial reign, the people from the city will flourish. May his name endure forever. May his name increase as long as the sun shines. And let men bless themselves by him. Let all nations call him blessed. And then we have the doxology, the praise to God at the end. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So when things of this life are overwhelming us and we are tempted to despair, we would do well to remember his promises and allow hope to fill our hearts. Blessings. <laughs>